Hello stock traders and investors. Trading the hype. Well in today's video I'm going to be showing you an event driven trading strategy that I utilize a lot and that can bring substantial returns. Hello my name is Robert Zeisblatt and today is Sunday 17th of May and in today's video I'm going to be discussing with you about a company called Sorrento Therapeutics and its extraordinary performance on Friday. I'm a professional trader investor and I'm looking, like I suppose everybody is, to maximize my profits. And, and I'm gonna be sharing with you a very interesting opportunity. So stick around and let's see what I've got. So on Friday, the company Sorrento Therapeutics, their share price skyrocketed um, um, after they stated that they had claiming a breakthrough on the COVID-19 antibody virus. Trading volume exploded. Um, nearly 365 million shares traded, which was enough to make this company the most actively traded stock on the major US exchanges, which is a pretty amazing result for a company that was really unknown by nearly everybody. Um, the company said that um, after four days of incubation, um, they were able to demonstrate a 100% inhibition um, of the COVID-19 virus infection of healthy cells. Now, that's a pretty important uh, development. And as you can see on this graph, um, the market really liked uh, the press release. Um, just look at this extraordinary spike and jump in the stock price. And look at the, uh, over here, this is the volume bar. Um, and uh, the value of the uh, trading volume was over $1 billion in actual trading uh, volume. And that's pretty amazing when you think that the actual market cap of the company uh, the day before, on Thursday, uh, where the share price was just over two and a half dollars was just around about $400 million. So it traded over three times its whole of its issued stock. So a pretty, uh, pretty special day. Now, if you're a shareholder, I imagine you'd be feeling, well, pretty happy um, and it's pretty was quite impressive uh, on that Friday's day trading so where do I stand on this well when I saw the stock performance like a lot of people um, the first question that entered my mind is wow well where is all this volume coming from um, I uh, I can imagine there were a lot of people jumping on as momentum traders, day traders or whatever, but who was actually selling those shares? I mean, where did all these shares originally generate from? So to me, that was the first sort of question that I was thinking about. And then the next thing I was thinking about is, is should I be buying those shares? I mean, if this is correct, what the company is stating, um, this is gonna transform, this is gonna transform the company dramatically. Um, and it will be an amazing opportunity and the share price, uh, even on Friday, will be far higher if it's really correct of what they've said. Or is it just gonna be a uh, one day wonder? And on Monday, uh, which is tomorrow, will the share price uh, dramatically fall and go back to its normal trading range? Um, so for me to answer that question, I really do need to look a little bit closer at really what the company uh, is doing uh, a little bit under its hood and it's and it's specifically at its filings so let's have a look at the next few slides and see what what I, what I have discovered well the first place I look at um, is always at the investor relations page um, of any company um, because there the company is obliged uh, under the SEC regulations to uh, post links to all its filings so I looked at the filings of Sorrento Therapeutics um, in, just in 2020, and I immediately noticed uh, that under one of the filings was an S3 registration statement. Now that's nothing unusual, lots of companies file registration statements, 
So when I pulled it up, um, and here we have, we can see it here on this slide, um, you can see that it says that the company um, is informing uh, the SEC that it's looking to raise um, one billion dollars um, in either issuing and selling common shares or in other debt instruments. That's a pretty mouth-watering sum. Now on March the 12th, um, the share price um, was $1.68, which gave the company a market cap of $300 million. So I was, uh, my, my view is that this is a pretty ambitious goal for any, for any company to raise $1 billion, but for such a tiny company, um, how on earth did they really plan to do this? Or was this just pie in the sky? They just put this number out there, but they had no intention of really raising this type of money. So I continued looking at their filings. And the next one that really jumped out was a few weeks later, after the March the 12th one, which is on April the 27th, so approximately six weeks later. And that was an 8K filing. Um, and companies only file an 8K when they have entered into a material definitive agreement that, will, that they have to inform the market that could dramatically change the, the company's um, performance. And in this particular filing, they state that they have entered into an agreement with a company called AGP Alliance, Global Partners, as sales agents um, to sell up to $250 million worth of common stock. Um, so raising new money, which was pretty impressive, particularly because on April the 27th, the world um, uh, was in an economic lockdown. Um, so not really the best time to embark on a new money raising expedition. Unless, of course, the company has some plan or something that they knew would dramatically enable them to attract a very large sum of money. So what gave the company the confidence that they thought that they could raise such large amounts of money. And the way I like to do it is by, first of all, looking at the people who are actually running the business. Um, the first piece of information really was uh, the chairman of the board, um, who actually wasn't only the chairman of the board, but he's also the chief executive and the president. So he's wearing a number of hats. And uh, his name is Henry Jai. And at the year end 2018, he... Um, he had a quite a generous remuneration. He had $670,000 of salary and he had $3.8 million of stock. So a pretty substantial sum for what is a relatively very small company. In this slide, which is the 2019 filing, um, uh, their annual filing, you can see that the salary increase uh, for the Henry Jai was from $670,000 to 781000 But more dramatically, his stock option had increased from $3.8 million to $7.3 million. So, a, you know, we're talking about a very serious confidence in the company's ability to increase its share price. And more importantly, that he could, he would be, enable him to be able to sell those shares. The other interesting factor is that every company has to disclose its main officers and the company only has two officers. The other one is a certain gentleman called Mr. Shao, I presume I'm, pre I'm pronouncing it that, that right way. And you can also see that he's on a pretty substantial package, uh, both in 2018 and 2019. So we've got two real key officers running the business and generating for themselves certainly a large amount of money. Now, I need to make it clear, I have absolutely no issue with officers rewarding themselves large amounts of money and stock options, as long as their interests are aligned with shareholders. So if we look at a stock graph um, over the period from March 2019 all the way through to Friday, you can clearly see that this company um, is not doesn't have a consistent trend line as such. Um, so we've got a very uh, uh, spike in beginning of March 2019, and then the whole of the rest of the year, the share price actually falls all the way through to just 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 around about one dollar fifty cents. So 
If you're a shareholder of this company, you wouldn't be very impressed. Um, if anything, um, I would find it increasingly difficult to accept why the officers of the company uh, decided to reward themselves a substantial stock option uh, package um, at, for the whole period of 2019 when the share price had actually dramatically hit a new low. The reason I'm focusing on this one particular aspect of the officer's compensation um, becomes a little bit more apparent when we look at this particular stock chart, which is the, a period from 2014, so it's over six years. And you can see um, that this is a, a, a company which has dramatic spikes, dramatic, dr really dramatic spikes, dramatic increases of its share price, followed by pretty much dramatic decreases of its share price. So what is really going on? So if you look at the um, or the first actual, I would say, spike over here, which is around October 2014, um, when I looked at its filings, um, I saw that the company made a press release, which was on October the 14th, and in it they said that they were pleased to announce uh, positive results from eight patients uh, enrolled in a program to do with cancer and pain treatment. Now, that's pretty good news, um, pretty important news, and the market seemed to like it, and the share price uh, reflected that, and you can see the share price uh, increasing quite nicely. Um, and um, the company took advantage, uh, naturally, of this increase, and in June 2015, the company raised, uh, announced that it was going to be raising $150 million of new capital. Um, after which um, the company share price started to decline and it continued to its decline all the way through for a quite a long period of time and hitting a low um, in uh, October 2017. Biotech companies are by in its nature very high risk so it's not really a surprise that the company wasn't able to perform on what its original promise of its press release of its cancer and pain uh, treatment. And in November, uh, to, on the November the 14th, 2017, they issued a new press release that said that they um, were filing for a um, authorization for their lidocaine medicated plaster. Um, their brand name is called ZTLIDO. I can't even pronounce it. Um, and Whatever it, and they got registration within the UK regulatory bodies that they could sell their this particular type of plaster treatment, um, um, and uh, the market seemed to like that, and the share price again started to once more started to rise over a period of time, um, and as you can see here, and on February the fifteenth, two thousand and eighteen, the company once more took advantage of this share price uh, increase, and this time it raised um, $250 million. So um, a, a nice amount of money it was, it was taking advantage of to, uh, of the price. And the subsequent result of this was that the share price reached a peak around April 2018. And once more, as you can see here, it started to fall, at this time at a much faster and steeper rate, um, and hitting a new low uh, of um, around in April 2019. So, what happened then? Well, on April the 10th, 2019, the company announced a discovery of a potential a non-dopaminergic uh, um, uh, treatment for controlling Parkinson's disease. Now, that is a very important uh, discovery, if, it, if it's correct, if it, if, if, it could, if, if it could be correct, and if it's true. And the share price really spiked up substantially on, the, on this news. Um, but uh, uh, we didn't really uh, follow through with this because, uh, surprise, the company then started to seek to raise new capital, um, not large amounts, but it did start to look to raise new small amounts of capital. The, comp the share price again once more fell um, all the way through to um, October, November 2019, where it hit a brand new low of below $1.
So by now you're beginning to see a certain pattern of, of the way the company operates and the way the share price uh, performs, um, and certainly on, on its particular press releases. And in uh, November 2019, the company made a dramatic announcement that it had received an unsolicited, non-binding term sheet proposal submitted by two unnamed biopharmaceutical companies to acquire all of the issued and outstanding shares of the company between three and five dollars in cash. Um, the, result, the result was that we had an immediate gap up of the company's share price, and as you can see here, um, but uh, subsequently, a few weeks later, the unnamed companies uh, were rejected by the board of directors, which is really just the two offices, and once more, we have a fall of the share price. Um, all the way through to um, April of this of this year, um, I think the word roller coaster really describes really what's been happening with this company over the last four years. Um, lots of uh, stomach churning movements, and I think the you would need to be a pretty have some pretty good information to be able to time your share trades. Um, uh, and if you're just a regular investor. This can't have been an easy ride. Certainly, there is no consistency with this company's performance. Um, so, to me, this looks like a uh, company that seems to not have found yet its feet. And yet, the officers seem to be dramatically increasing their compensation year upon year. So, we lead us up all the way through to um, today's events. And on Friday, the company made this dramatic press release um, that um, basically stated about their um, COVID-19 uh, discovery. Um, I have highlighted in red, um, so it's not what they put in their press release, but I've highlighted in red a very small line within their press release that really is important to read and to take note of. And that is, it's saying that it, the actual experiment or the uh, was based upon a very low antibody concentration. So what exactly is a very low antibody concentration and what does it really mean? How, you know, how effective is this 100% um, inhibition for the COVID-19 virus infection if it's being utilized on a very, or this um, uh, this uh, release is, or what they're trying to claim is on such a low concentration. Um, it's very unclear at the moment. Um, the only thing they are stating is that they're going to be putting this through a peers review, though it doesn't say when it will be. But regardless what I think, let's have a look what the market thinks. As of Friday afternoon, the market closed, the market cap of this company was $1.41 billion. Um, its revenue, um, according to its own filings, uh, for the first quarter from January to the 31st of March 2020 was $7.72 million. So a pretty uh, generous market cap for a company with such minuscule revenues. Um, so whatever you may think um, in regards to it has made that discovery, it's real, it's not real. Nevertheless, the market cap and the price of the shares um, is certainly um, reflecting a very high price earning ratio um, and expectancy of what this company is worth. So where does this leave me? Uh, possibly upside down. Um, but more importantly, where do I think the share price is heading? Um, by now, you probably have concluded that my view on this company is at best, uh, sceptical um, and uh, a, certainly a short selling opportunity? Well, the answer is um, yes and no. So what do I mean by that? Well, I never underestimate the irrationality of markets. And just because I possibly will be right in the future, it doesn't mean that the share price could not much could not rise much higher in the very short term. So, for me, the first question always is: is how am I going to trade this? Um, 
and how do I ensure that regardless that I may be right um, over the long term, I minimize my risk or my loss? So let's have a look at the actual probabilities of this trade. Well, the first thing is, is that I believe that the share price is going to make substantial moves in any particular direction within a very short time. The second factor is, before I walk into this trade, like I do with all my trades, I need to understand the exit door, or more importantly, I also need to understand the maximum I'm prepared to lose on this trade. So what I'm trying to do here is I'm going to minimize my downside, maximize my upside, um, due to the actual possibilities of the uncertainty with this uh, very volatile stock. So why trade it? Well, actually, I think this is a great event-driven opportunity here. In my view, the stock price is at some point going to fall dramatically. And when it does fall dramatically, it's going to fall to a very low price. So the question for me is really is how to express my view on this particular trade. And the only way I can do this is through a particular option trade and to structure it with a bias for the downside. So there you have it. I've told you my overview in a very brief summary in this video and how I intend to uh, proceed on Monday. Now, if you want more information, um, below is a link uh, to my website um, where I have a load of um, uh, strategies and processes of my way of trading. And as well, I also have a free newsletter which you can uh, subscribe to, um, which gives an overview of the markets on a regular weekly basis. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. You can find a lo all my links uh, below in the uh, description. Um, please feel free to leave your comments. Um, and I look forward to uh, speaking with you till next time. Thank you.